For the past six months, I've been interning at a tech startup as a software engineer and specifically a full stack web developer. Now, what that means is a person or an engineer who works on the front end as well as the back end of the website. So all the stylistic on the front end and all the functionality and integrations on the back. So before I get into the actual day, I want to preface by saying that my company works in Agile. And if you don't know what that means, it is essentially a style of project management for delivering software projects. It's involved in working in these selected timeframes called sprints. And sprints can be like one, two, four weeks long. And it's about choosing the features or the fixes that you want to work on for that particular sprint and dedicating your time to delivering it by the end. And by the end, it should be a workable feature in production and be good to go. I start every week with a sprint planning, right? And so what that involves is every Monday morning, we sit down, the whole engineering team is about six, seven of us now, including, I think, nine, including product team as well. And we go through the prioritized list of tasks that we need to do. Dependent on how difficult the task is or how many people are required on the task, we plan out the entire workload for that sprint. So getting into the actual day, every day besides Monday, we have a daily stand-up. So a daily standup is where you come into the meeting with your rest of your engineers and product team as well. And you talk about what you did yesterday and the progress you made, as well as what you're going to do today. It just kind of aligns people on the progress of the sprint, how things are going. And if you need help with any particular feature that you're working on, I like to track everything about my life really on Notion. Notion is like my godsend. I keep two main kind of files on there. I keep a work diary and projects. So every day I kind of treat the stand up like my work diary. I look at what I did yesterday. I look at what um, I'm doing today and I make a little bit of a list, a to-do list, make it nice and simple. I then look at the projects folder where I have all my projects listed out and it's all about going, okay, you know, I'm working on building a new feature for the front end. Cool. What are the troubles I'm having perhaps? Or what do I need help with? Or what do I kind of what value am I providing here and what is already done and needs to be worked on next. I just love it because it keeps me very aligned with what I'm going to do. This is just a personal thing. I know a lot of people don't do this. They just jump straight into the work, but that's how I, that's how I run things. So after I've made my plan for the day on Notion, I also check if there's any code that I need to review. When we are building out a feature and once it's done, and I'll show you a bit more specifically later, we upload our code to be reviewed by the other engineers. And at our company specifically, we have to get one or two approvals before that can go into um, the development or the test server, essentially, before it goes out to the main product. So once all that is done, I've made the plan for the day, I've reviewed my other engineers code, um, I look at what I'm actually doing for the day. Recently, the whole team has been working on a checkout flow. So we're an e-commerce website. And so we developed our own checkout flow to give users a better experience. My ticket here was to redefine and re-implement all of our events. An event is essentially tracking user behavior. So if a user clicks on a certain button, we get notified. If they complete an order, we get notified. It's just to keep an eye out on what the user is doing so we can improve the experience overall and kind of make some good analytics out of it. I broke this workload down into steps. The first step here was defining the events, getting alignment on those events, and then kind of preparing them and implementing them into the code base, into the new checkout flow. So we use a platform called Segment to manage all of our events, and it helps us collect them as well as distribute them to other providers. The first thing I did was look at how we already track events, what events we're tracking and what fields and information we're collecting. I then looked at the segment documentation to see if there was any existing features that they had in their library that we could use to improve our documentation. When I finished one of those milestones, I would call it, such as defining the events, I would share it with my other engineers. We use GitHub. So I'm sure many of you are familiar or at least heard of GitHub. It's just a platform for storing and maintaining your entire code base. Once I've written all of this out, I commit it to what's called a branch. A branch is a feature of Git and GitHub, which is essentially like a deviation of the main code that you've created to make your changes. Once you push it into your branch and you've made all the changes you want to do, you can then make what's called a pull request, which is essentially a document to explain the changes you've made, showcase them, and allow other developers to review and approve the document as a whole. 
As you can see here, I use GitHub Desktop. It's a great application. And so I've made all my changes. I'm going to commit here. And then I'm just going to publish my branch as well. Once that's published, we can make a pull request. As you can see here, this is the pull request I have made. In this pull request, you can see a brief explanation of the changes that were made and some of the context around why they were made. And you can see a bunch of different aspects about the pull request, but the most important part is the files changed. So when you go into the files change, you can see how it differs from what we currently have. You can make comments, you can suggest improvements. You can even make code, uh, change the code directly in the pull request if you want to as well. Once we've all aligned on what's the right path for this, then we can click approve and we push that into the dev server. So the dev server is just basically the step before the production. Production is where we all use it, where consumers can see the final product. And so dev is for final testing, making sure there's nothing wrong, all of that. While that's usually the main workflow for the day, we also have meetings throughout the day sometimes. These can be general meetings that we always have, or it can be special meetings if a certain team needs a certain request or a certain feature to be made for them. As an example, I had the asset operations team come to me recently and talk about how they wanted a better way to change the prices of a certain product on Shopify per product variant. Once I get given this new request or certain feature, I do the same process as I would any other problem. I would write up a ticket for it, and that involves defining the problem, looking at potential solutions, who might be good for this ticket, and pretty much putting it straight into the list to be planned into the next few sprints. If it's a really urgent ticket, like it's suddenly come up, uh, we need to work on it now or some big impact is going to happen, we usually sit down and write up the ticket, the same exact process, get someone to start working on it. So we assign it to someone immediately. And depending on how urgent their previous work is, we just jump straight into it. Like I mentioned, we work in a agile framework and scrum methodology. So there are some generic meetings that come with that. An example is a retrospective. So our team retro that we do once a fortnight. Now we do this retro so that we can look back on the sprint and talk about what went wrong, what went right and what we can improve on. We look at what we can improve on so we can make our workflow more efficient, work better as a team, and just make things better overall, really. Like, <laughs> it's just good to kind of reflect and take that time to kind of understand our entire process and how we can improve it. That is pretty much the entire workflow of coding itself. Everything else about my day involves reading documentation, preparing, and kind of tracking my workflow. It involves joining meetings and participating. It involves reviewing other people's code and just working with other members of the team to help them get their code pushed through. That is the day of a web developer in its entirety, essentially, as a software engineer. Like I mentioned, different industries have different practices and different workplaces have different ways of doing their methodologies. So take everything I say with a grain of salt here, but this is the generic day of a software engineer. I hope this video has given you insight into the realistic day of a software engineer or a web developer more specifically and it helps you kind of get into the industry maybe or align your personal practices with that of what we do in the workplace. Thank you very much for watching this video everyone. This is my first ever video as you can probably tell <laughs> but I am very excited to make more videos. I'm very passionate about this space in my, in my industry. If you're a software engineer working in the industry or even perhaps a different, a different sub niche, you know, not web development or anything like that and you have processes or workflows that differ from what I've spoken about, please let me know in the comments because I would love to uh, I would love to compare, really, and see if there's anything I've missed out on so viewers can get a better understanding overall. Again, thank you for watching, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. See you, everyone.